Transformation in three, two, one. Hi everybody, Heather Stargazer here to do reading for the collective for whoever, whenever, wherever. I hope you guys are doing fantastic today. I just want to say thank you to everybody who came out to the Witches of Wyandotte yesterday. It's my absolute favorite event that our town does and it was loaded with people. There were so many awesome witches in so many awesome um, costumes, dress. Oh, what, a, what an absolute favorite time. So I just want to say thank you to everybody who attended. It was fabulous to meet you all and um, for us in the community to bring us into it a little bit too. I'm going to use the same cards that we used at the uh, event yesterday. So that's the Witch's Tarot by Ellen Dugan and then the Chrysalis Tarot and then the Talisman cards and the Wiccan Oracle. I also have Sacred Geometry and Shamanic heal Healing out here. Um, and uh, I was looking through this wonderful book of circles. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite things any anybody's ever gifted me um, because it's got, it's I don't want to lose the page that we're going to look at, but it's just got every kind of circle you could imagine and then the histories of the circles, right? And I was looking at it and I was reading about infinity, right? The Ouroboros. And this symbol has been coming up in uh, for many people, both this symbol right here and this one right here. So I thought, well, it would be interesting to share about infinity from the book of circles um because what they have to say is very interesting it says a more esoteric line of reasoning has long associated the circle with ideas of eternity infinity perpetuity and immensity the notion of infinity as a circle was portrayed by the early christian father saint augustine ad 30 354 to 430, who described God as a circle, whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere. Possibly influenced by the Hermetic tradition, St. Augustine's analogy was later appropriated by the French mathematician Blaise Pascal, who supplied his notable Panzis in 1670, a more deistic di di interpretation. Okay. Nature is an infinite sp sphere whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere. The idea of per perpetuity has been commonly portrayed as an ever-expanding circle. Take this passage from Wolf Wando, Wolf Wando, uh, Ralph Wando, it's from Emerson, who I friggin' love, okay? <laughs> it says, circles. A life of a man is a self-evolving circle from which a ring, imperceptibly small, rushes on all sides outward to new and larger circles that without end. To the extent at which this generation of circles, wheel without wheel, will go depends on the force of truth of the individual soul. Such transformative, seemingly divine force of the circle that for centuries researchers pursued as an idea of perpetual motion, a system or a machine, normally in the shape of a wheel that could operate forever without any external source of energy. This unfruitful hunt is itself a remarkable example of the notion of drifting along associated with a circle and expressed by phrases such as going around in circles, running circles around, and circular argument, a vicious circle. Across space and time, there have been numerous symbols of infinity, but two critical ones have been incorporated in the circular shape, the Ouroboros and the Inso, Predominant in Greek and medieval alchemy, but with various uh, variant with numerous variants to be found across the globe, the image of a serpent or dragon eating its own tail in a circular configuration, commonly known as Ouroboros, symbolizes the perp perpetually cyclical nature of life and the universe. This long-lasting mark of eternity might have been the precursor to the mathematical symbol of infinity, with the extent modifications of the serpent being adopted to a sideways figure eight. In Japanese aesthetic, the tradition of ink painting, and especially in Zen Buddhism, the simplicity and elegance of a hand-drawn circle, enso, circle, embodies pure enlightenment of the universe, void, and infinity.
Finally, if there has ever been a tangible attempt in mapping immensity, it has been through the numerous efforts to interpret outer space in the vast sea of stars in the night sky, planispheres, star charts, back to the date of the first millennium BC, with remarkable ex ex extent examples from Babylon and ancient Egypt. I'm just going to say this one about um, the notion of infinity as a circle by Father Augustine. That's, again, one of the examples of um, one thing taking something that they got from somewhere else and claiming it. And since that was their, 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 um, the original claimant from that dominant culture or that dominant belief system, that credit is attributed to that person when that person actually got it from somewhere else. The circle inside the circle inside the circle talks about this, goes back to infinity, right? Goes back to Babylon, Egypt, the Hermetic principles, all of those things. And St. Augustine's introduction to it into the Catholic Church, into the Church, right, was um, the first accepted notion of this by that overarching religious entity and so they couldn't attribute it to something that happened in the past or some other belief system that might give that belief system credit they had to give credit where they thought credit was due and that's in the interpreting the, uh, the person who belongs to their religion so that is another classic case of history and circular arguments and things going around in circles and the expansion of that i do want to put a little marker Let's get a little marker from our box of fortunes. We'll see what it says. Oh, that's you. This one has some water damage. So it says, um, ways be successful in professional career. See what I'm saying? Like someone got water on them. And I think it's cool because it kind of changes the words on them a little bit. So um, ways to be successful in your career. Mm. And then it says, ooh, a financial investment will yield turns beyond your hopes. Wow. So both of those talk about s successful financial investments and uh, turns, right? Taking turns, going around in circles, examining things in a circular fashion, in a circular way. Very, very cool. Mm. So we'll start the Ancestor Spirits, guys. What messages do you have for the collective today? What do we need to know for our highest encouragement? And the Ace of Wands in reverse, the Tower in reverse, Six of Cups in reverse. This is a mixed deck. Mm. It's almost like losing passion in something kind of keeps us, I heard, keeps us afloat. Right? Maybe we've walked away from something. This is really, really interesting, you guys, because I just showed you. This is a mixed deck. Okay, lots of people were shuffling this deck lots of different ways yesterday, and I, I didn't, like, resort it into its natural form. I just shuffled it some more. So, um, I'm, I'm going to say this right now. Only one card is facing upright, and it's a damn good one. So, let's see what this says. Three of Wands in the upright as an overarching energy. I'm hearing patiently waiting and kind, right? So not losing our patience um, for those ships to come in. Sometimes it's like something that we've... Uh, we know that it's it's on its way, you know, like you've you've been told this will be you will be receiving this by this date. Sometimes it's a an idea, a concept. Sometimes we just know in our heart that we need to wait for something that's coming in. But usually uh, and we don't know when it'll be here. But usually almost always with the three of uh, three of wands, it's something that we've done in the past that has gotten us to this point. Remember, it's preceded by the Two of Wands, which was a direction to go, a crossroads. We've chosen a direction and now we're waiting either for the ship to pick us up and take us out to sea or for the goods that we need to start building to come in from port. So take it how it resonates, right? But the next card in line is the Four of Wands where we begin to build our future, where we begin to build our legacy and there's a celebration. So it's like we're waiting for that to happen. And um, 
I have a feeling like we're, we're waiting so that to, to be able to get going, right? Um, all these cards in the reverse here, Ace of Wands, losing our passion, losing our patience, not really having a lot of vigor for something. And then we have the Page of Wands directly underneath of it. Also, it's like I'm hearing no news is good news um, because we don't really have, maybe you don't have a lot to say about something. Maybe something isn't um, propelling you forward, right? It, and that's happening because there's no surprises here. That's not really, there's like something foundational that needs to be kept in place. And there could be, here's two people, uh, two immature people, immature concepts, immature messages, right? One is like lost its enthusiasm and the other one might be um, like getting out or saying things that drive others away, right? They The Knight of swords in the reverse kind of a brash crass individual doesn't really think about the words that they're saying takes actions in the mental realm that are kind of misinformed right and um here we have the sun in the reverse and the six of cups in the reverse and it's like you know mm, we might not always be able to see every aspect of the things that we're leaving behind but we can see enough to know that we don't want to return to them right um it's like there are no surprises here. You are aware of each of the characters involved and how they behave and that there could be some immaturity in those messages that you're getting, those words. Maybe people, someone is saying something out of turn in order to affect something, but um, you aren't even looking into why they're saying it. You just accept that it's what it is and you're not, um, I heard not bothered by it, but you're really not chariot. This is the card that's in the upright in the reverse. Victory head and heart on the same page moving forward i heard at an even keel so just going right and um when we know where we're going it's a lot easier to lead those horses there when our head and our heart both know we want to get up and go it's easy to get up and go but where are you going well i think that you know i think that you know because here are these the two that are in the upright like kind of maybe there's like this reminiscent feeling maybe um when you haven't heard from or about someone or something in a while it's a lot easier to really look at it from a um objective perspective to really start seeing some of the things I mean, when when things just keep happening over and over and over we don't really have a lot of time to process it when somebody is in our in our space or in our sphere um commonly and for a long period of time we don't really get to process the day-to-day -day. the things just keep happening we're, we're, we're like it's like integrated into our everything right um but when we step away from it and we give it time away and we see that there are no changes there are no surprises and that you know it's kind of a a cloudy day there we we understand that it's something that we don't really need to or want to when we uh, return to when we think back on the things that were said that kind of drained our enthusiasm maybe maybe we're tired of the fight maybe it just doesn't do it there's no inspiration there right it, it leads us to a place of um of knowing that whew, there's more out there Right. And so we're going to find it. This could be in any aspect. Um, there is a lot of wands here and a lot of swords. So I do have maybe it's projects that you're working on. Maybe it's things that inspired you previously that don't inspire you. Maybe it's a job. Maybe it's a friendship, whatever it is. Um, maybe it's just a mindset. When I say just a mindset, it ain't ever just a mindset. The mindset's probably the biggest thing that you could change. Right. Um, the biggest thing that that makes the biggest difference because as soon as we see something differently we we uh can really start making what's the rune say more than doers we are deciders for once we decide the doing becomes effortless mm, let's find out let's get some info let's find out what is this ace of wands in the reverse about maybe you're just tired maybe you're just like oh like i'm physically awake and blah blah blah, blah, blah but i'm tired of that what are you gonna go try something new and then the candle spoke Mm, ace of wands in the reverse wow hierophant and the queen of spirals which says muse divine child and there you go it's like drain the childlike essence out of something the inspiration right maybe going back to learn something new maybe it's the traditionalness maybe it's the um commitment to something of that nature but see she's got this dough here's the child it's all about this like innocence to it right the innocence to doing the thing the inspiration this one's painting and this one is the muse 
So it's like uh, we're, we're looking for something that can bring us back into that space where we are constructing something out of our inspiration, right? The Queen of Wands makes things work, right? She makes things. She's very attractive. She's very beautiful. She's extremely creative and very, very bold, right? And um, if she isn't inspired by something, she's not going to be very amused, right? She's going to she's gonna go seek that out or create that herself, which is the that energy, that internal feminine fire that wants to manifest out into the world. And then we have the divine child, which is the Hierophant Taurus energy, that really, really bringing it out into the world in a solid three-dimensional form of some way, right? And following, I would say like a tradition, but Remember we, we talk about sometimes about how the Hierophant is number five. He's associated with all of the fives in the tarot. And we, we think of um, tradition as something that doesn't change. But just like, the, just like the circles, this evolution of thought, this evolution of ideas, right? Things don't, um, we've made progress. Things don't contain themselves well or kind of peter out and lose their, lose their spark when... Um, they're just constantly rerun over and over and over, running around in circles. And this is a new way of looking at tradition. This is a new way of looking at um, lessons that we've learned, of tools that we have that are available to us, but now we're looking at them in a different way. And again, I'm, I'm just thinking about St. Augustine because, I mean, it's the monad, man. It's the monad, the, the center of the sun. And that is the, one of the um, basis's, basic things in hermetic uh, philosophy and then we also think about you know like John D kind of went really crazy with it around that same time as St. Augustine and I think that that might have been part of I mean, this is just a side note a reason why they had to attribute things to people like St. Augustine because you had um, people like John D uh, and his predecessors who were looking into alchemy and looking into into magic and looking into things of that nature and the church had to people were starting to hear about it people were starting to learn about it and the church had to make an adaptation before they lost space no no that was our idea that was our idea sorry and then that way they could you know continue to maintain the power over the idea right john d was queen elizabeth the first um resident astrologer and he was a phenomenal and interesting person okay so there's there's something to that there's something to that like getting a new um inspiration from an idea and trying to make it manifest in a way that isn't the way that it was before and then we have the page of wands in the reverse that usually talks about like no news or not hearing something someone who is unenthusiastic not inspired right can you tell us about this page of wands, please? Can you tell us about this page of wands, please? Eight of scrolls. Yeah, because there's this thought that we keep going around in circles. Eight of swords. There's this thought that keeps going around and around in the mind, right? And it's almost like you're not being able to escape out of that, and that, that circle not being able to expand out. Um because it's trapped in this mental loop, right? So if you have a song stuck in your head, there's two great ways to get the song out of your head. One is to go listen to the song. Write it down, sing it as much as you can, and then immediately after, listen to another song and having that song you know, also is enthusiastic in your voice. So your your resonance kind of continues to go through it. When there's a song stuck in your head, generally there's something to that right? Some, some aspect of that thing that your brain is clicking on, catching on, trying to figure out that it means something to you, right? But maybe that you're not getting the message because you need to move beyond that particular thought. Gosh, you guys, it's going to be a long reading. I appreciate you. <laughs> We're already at 18 minutes. Let's just, let's just do it. Thank you. I hope you have your coffee. I have my coffee over here. Mm. Wow. Just to take a note, like tower on the bottom, tower right here. I was about to clarify the tower. Oh, and they got tower and temperance. Can you please tell us? Can you please tell us what this tower is about? I heard I heard establishment. Watcher, Queen of Mirrors. And here we go with the sun again. Coming out with that on the bottom. It's like keeping things in check and keeping things in line and in order and in balance out of the goodness of our hearts, really watching all of this stuff go on and think, you know what? Um, I don't want to be on that tower when it falls and maybe any contribution to its growth is going to put it in an unstable position. And the people there aren't really ready to grow. The idea isn't ready to grow or manifest. And so it might be the most compassionate thing to do to kind of just watch in, in a, in a um, observant kind of way, in a wise kind of way, just knowing what is the truth, who is ready, 
ready uh, to express something, who is ready to expand, and who's maybe trapped in a thought and mulling it over here. You got the watcher. She's paying attention. She's paying close attention. You know, and uh, again, that that like that idea of like. Um, okay, so. Uh, Caught to the stars, right? In Star Trek, they have this thing called the Prime Directive, and we don't violate the Prime Directive, meaning that you don't interfere with another culture's growth. So if they haven't gotten to the point where in their own technology or our own philosophies or understanding where they can ingest something, if something is like like a spaceship, uh, you know, for cavemen, it was like they weren't supposed to see that um, because they weren't ready to, to grasp that yet. Um, it's kind of that idea of like kind of letting letting people places and things who aren't quite ready to come into that new philosophy that new understanding that new access that new thing it's kind of letting it letting them come to it on their own um in order to keep their their foundation solid which it would be like pulling the rug out from underneath of them if if these things kind of got and it's the same with saint augustine and the circle man we're coming back to that so it, it's saying like this wise compassionate watcher kind of observing that and again you know like two queens out now that internal knowing that internal observation i'm hearing internal observation so we're seeing it and we're processing it but we aren't quite acting on it yet we're still taking that time to process what is this knight of swords in the reverse beautiful look at the page of stones on the bottom the acrobat right keeping our balance while we practice things you get the magician and here's that two of spirals the two of wands that preceded the three of wands here with this knight of swords in the reverse right the magician has it's all the aces <clears throat> it's having the and i just saw 21 12 all the aces and all of the um resources at your at your disposal right here available to you which way are you going to go with it and you know what this which way this guy's going right you know the direction that that guy is taking and you know that you have the means to do something else so are you going to stay here and hang out in that energy or are you going to move into the new new where you can exercise your new tools where you can create the new things that you want to create where you can actually speak openly about them without worrying about it um kind of shattering somebody's somebody's world or life philosophy you know i mean they'll get to it when they're there it's not our job to push people there i do not recommend proselytizing in any kind of way because um it's very it's kind of like repulsive like if somebody's ready for you to bring them that information they're open to it they're going to receive it and they're going to be ready to be there but if you're just out they're pushing your ideas all over everybody who's not asking for his, like unwarranted advice and it's kind of like nah, 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 nah. and then they get like i don't want to hang out with you because you're always talking about that you know kind of like you you know you know that guy 22 22 or that chick and um that that's not necessarily the most effective way to get true growth out of someone okay so let's ask about this uh six of cups what is the six of cups in the reverse about? I had to cut a bit of that out. Bear was drinking. Wow, we got another queen. <laughs> queen of stones, the artiste, and um, the ace of stones. And again, not going back to the past, the new new here, the solid new new for that creative endeavor. We had the, we had the muse, right? What inspires us, what doesn't. We had the watcher. How can we be compassionate to ourselves and others in this, you know, what 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 is it that we've learned? What would be best for everyone and everything? And now we have the create the artiste, the creator of the real real, the manifest come true. We had the magician, all the aces available to us, and now we have here the the one who's gonna bring it into the reality, right? The realistic space here. And then here's an in the vision of how she sees it you see it right i say she's because we're talking about the internal feminine the queen on the card take it as it resonates always six of one or six of cups in the reverse knowing we can't go back we have to continue to move forward we have to create the new new that is what we are inspired to do that's what we are drawn to do that's what we want to make manifest what does your new new look like what is it that you're creating you know and look at she's a queen she's mature in this she's got skill she's she's learned right and she's making she's taking those skills just like the the um 
magician here. She's taking those skills and she's using them, utilizing them to create that world that she wants to see, to create that product, that thing, that new, new, whatever it is, you know, the, uh, the, ace of pentacles is like a solid offer maybe a solid offer is coming in for you today so that that's what you're waiting on here so that you can get going and moving into your future successfully i heard uh, sunset it's an, uh, what is the sun in the reverse about please two of mirrors right soulmate connections soulmate bonds five of stones six of stones it's like bittersweet because um what we're giving to is no longer what we previously were giving to and maybe somebody feels left out maybe we feel a little sad about it right maybe it's uh the five of stones is about like being allowed in or not being allowed in we had this card um, the other day to the five five of pentacles energy here into the six of pentacles energy that equal give and take and reciprocity right and maybe you have more to give than it's um able to be received by the situation so you have to go and experience it in a place that's got the broader expanding circle right the broader expanding vision of what the new new of the next thing is and so you feel kind of bad about um everything that you observed that made you realize that um you, you know, there was like different things going on here and uh, in order to maintain the foundations of, of each thing, there had to be, you know, a, kind of like a, a, a separation, two of wands energy, three of wands energy, but it brings you back. So, so it's like, um, you know, sunset on that day, sunrise on another. Mm -hmm. And just having this like, it just feels very nostalgic. Tell us about this chariot. This is what we were like the the one card that came out in the upright here, the original spread. What what is this chariot about? The sun again. It's the sun again, you guys. Sunset on one day, sunrise on another. Mm, head and heart on the same page. It all becoming clear. And it's almost like it's lighting this the way so that you can see what you're doing while you're creating your new new, right? And you 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 logically want to do this, and you understand within your within your heart space that that's that's the compassionate thing to do, and that's what's necessary. Because if you hold yourself back, if you hold yourself back, then that will eventually turn into um, negative feelings, right? And so you have to get moving forward. You have to continue on your path to not feel stagnant about it. And I'm like I'm saying. Mm, five five of pentacles got a lot of fives the, the uh, five of pentacles and now the five of wands and the hierophant those things connected to change and not everybody's always happy when things change and maybe people like you where you are because it helps maintain the foundation of the thing but you know um if it's if it's confining to you if you're if your expansion can't expand then it turns into this really small thing it's like the oral borals the, the snake that eats its own tail is like it went from this circle to this infinity symbol like this but it's your commander it's the it's the giant serpent that holds in the waters around midgard around the the place where humans live right so it has to be continuously going around just like our earth just like our uh, sun and their solar system and all of the things they go around in these cycles and there could be some kind of like argument or sadness or um the competitiveness you know people are kind of maybe being a little bit biting and snippy but you know um that this is what needs to be done for the best of everybody involved it's not i'd say like it's not a super big deal but it's not i think that everybody will get over their their negative feelings um because they're gonna see what you're doing when you get there and they're gonna be like oh and that's how they begin to expand, right? That's how they begin to respond. They see the thing that you're doing and it gives them permission and it shows what's available out there that outside of what it is that they're so used to and what they've, you know, then that grows them. But like I said, they, you don't, you aren't there to like change the foundation of, of their, their existence or the former existence or the idea. You're here to create a new, new, new in the vision that is broader right and um grow through that and, and make this make the solid change create the things and then other people will oh that's where that was coming from that's what happened there look at that home and the labyrinth there 
in a little hut, right? How do we feel it? Do we feel at home within ourselves? If we're, if we're in somewhere, if we're in a space or place that is too small for our ideas or um, too closed in for our love, right? It doesn't have enough resources to accomplish the thing that we need to accomplish. We no longer feel at home there. Now we need to expand out further and we and claim a new space within the home within the self. Look at that. Stripping illusions. Mm. Hold on one second. Okay. Stripping illusions, not just our illusions, but the maybe, you know, the fact that these guys feel like they're trapped here. You can explain to people that they aren't trapped. But sometimes that in, that feeling of enclosure is so much that they can't see it. You have to go. You have to actually show them. No, we're not trapped here. We, we can get out right here. This is how I do it. This is you go. Look, ascension. Absolutely, right. That's that growth, that progress, that expansion. We're talking about. It's the spiral. It's the spiral. See that? The circle. The ever going around and around and around and around. But it's getting bigger every time or it's contracting every time, depending on, you know, it breathes just like everything. That's how the universe works, guys. Conception, solar plexus chakra and Gaia. Mm. I feel like I need to take a deep breath. Solar plexus is the third. Uh, it's the third card. Very interesting. Third chakra conception mm -hmm. knowing in your gut what it is you need to create here what it is that needs to come through the concept and also like what the, the creating the initial creation of and here's Gaia the feminine energy is all this feminine energy out here today what are we creating what are we manifesting mother earth is here to help us to help guide us right there's some talismans. Talismans. Casting away negativity. Again, the snake. There's your commander. And the wisdom. Right? The knowing. Mm. And then casting away negativity too, right? Like not staying in the space we don't belong and not bringing negativity into that space by trying to force it to change before it's ready. <laughs> Equilibrium. Wow. Maintaining that balance. What does this one say? Confidence. Mm-hmm. Boldly going where no one has gone before and staying grounded while we do it. Right. And I think that that's like a very important thing. And I think that's why the universe gives us these periods of time where we have to sit and wait um, because we need that time to process. And we might not have that time. Like if everything is coming at us all just like boom, 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 like we were talking about a few minutes ago, then we don't have enough time to process. I often think about that. Like people didn't have music readily available to them. They had to go where musicians were to hear it. Right. It would take quite a bit of time to walk from one place to another. Like if I if we lived here and we needed to get to like downtown you know what i mean it would take us like so long to walk there as opposed to how long it takes us to drive there now and so and while we're driving we're listening to music we don't have that time of peaceful mind of working with just our own thoughts or the sounds of nature around us or the sounds of other people and chatter happening everybody's got their headphones on and everybody is all closed in and we're kind of missing not only everything that's going out and going on out around us but what's going on in that internal self too right think that that's ooh. take that moment to yourself if you don't want to listen to your own thoughts you don't have to you can go listen to water you can listen to the wind, you can listen to birds, you can listen to bear walking around the house. Here, good boy, baby. Look at that, the spring. This is in bulk. Talking about that. And also being aware of, there's the fox in the, in the um, hen house. Being aware of people and places and modals that push those things and those ideas that maybe aren't necessarily theirs. Maybe they're taking those concepts and saying they came from one place, but that's not where they came from. They're like, oh, yo, yo, that's that, that person's song. And you're like, no, that person was covering that song. It was actually so-and-so. Find out where things come from, 
right? That's like a wonderful, wonderful way to get in touch with um, yourself, the history of something, to find out more and to remove um, any idea that the thing that we think we know right now is the thing that it's always been, because that's very restricting. Here we go, in bulk, um, February 1st, the Celtic cross quarter holy day that welcomes the first signs of spring. The young lambs are born, snowdrops push their way through to the light, and the days are lengthening. The, godded Bridget, the goddess Bridget walks over the land, bringing with her the beginnings of warmth and invigorates new life. Like all Celtic days, Imbolc is from sunset to sunset, so it incorporates the Groundhog Day with its own symbolism and the return of the sun. Wow, we got grounding and the sun. Uh, meaning something that has been coming for a long time is about to arrive. Um, give full attention now to any dream or wish that has long been hidden in your heart, for the time of auspicious beginnings is here. The more... Um, ooh, it says don't rush. If you need more time... Um, for your dream or wish to become ready to come forth, uh, do more planning. Don't rush. Keywords, purity, beginning, light. I welcome goodness into my life. How can you purify your spirit? I think one of the ways that we can purify ourselves and our spirit and the things is um, through being honest with ourselves. And again, um, not staying in spaces where, where we've outgrown. Definitely. Not trying to force others to grow along with us when they're not ready. Get one or two of these just as like a little side note. What affirmations would you like for us to walk away with today? Follow what lights you up. Absolutely. And on the bottom, embrace your inner and outer beauty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're, you're <laughs> like, what is that? Uh, Stuart, Stuart Smalley? You're good enough. You're smart enough. Gosh darn it. People like you. Hell yeah, they do. Hell yeah. So follow your light. Be what's exciting. Be what excites you. Don't worry about how others are going to feel about it. Don't worry about dragging others with you. Be the light that shines the way for others. Don't stay where you don't belong. Allow yourself to expand because everything has its turn. It's all going in circles anyway, right? Oh, I hope that was helpful. I hope that you got something out of it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for remembering to hit like and subscribe. And thanks for coming back and seeing us again next time.